Okay, we'll call to order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District District Pension Board of Trustees regular meeting agenda Thursday, October 10th, 2013 at 1807 hours. Okay, a pledge of allegiance. Director Branch, will you lead us? Sure. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I thank you. Let the uh, roll call show all are present, with the exception of Scott Aronson due to mechanical problems. The other three uh, board members have joined us by phone, along with uh, Director Branch and myself. Uh, any ad uh, additions or deletions to the agenda? Follow no. up. Doc, you good with the agenda? No, yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Uh, it's just, are you good with the agenda? Oh, yeah. Do you have any additions or deletions? Okay. No, not today. All right, seeing none, uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Uh, review the July 11th, 2013 special meeting minutes. Can you hear us all right? Okay. Yeah, we were, we're reviewing the uh, July 11th minutes. That's why nobody's talking. Since you can hear me now, do you have any uh, additions or deletions to the, or corrections to the July 11th minutes? Okay. Okay. Doc, you good? I'm good. Greg? Yes. Good? Okay. Motion to accept, approve the July 11th, 2013 minutes. Second. Second. Is there a second? Second. All those, second. In, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that motion passed. Is there any old business before the board tonight? All done. Okay. Uh, the first item of new business is the actuarial valuation as of January 1st, 2013. Present that, Chief. Okay, sure. The um, you know obviously there's a lot of information in the actuarial report. Um, I think that uh, there's really only two uh, two things that I normally look to for this. Uh, you know, in terms of determining what uh, the district needs to do in terms of uh, investing into the, the program. And um, if you turn to page six on the report, um, section nine there, the, uh, is the current assumed contribution adequate to support the prospective benefit levels on an actuarially sound basis? And their report is yes, uh, that it is. And that's assuming the annual contribution of $50,670 uh, that we have budgeted for that. Okay. Uh, the second uh, one, if you turn to page eight, it shows uh, actuarially on line nine, the cal calculated contribution, that number is what they recommend as a minimum to invest into the program each year to uh, be able to uh, continue paying the assumed benefits. And uh, according to that, uh, we would be able to actually have a negative $321 invested into the program each year. Uh, now, the calculated contribution is never less than zero, so when they have a negative number like that, they're basically saying if we didn't put any money in right now, it would still be in uh, uh, actuarially sound uh, condition to, to pay the expected benefits. So with the 50000 that we're proposing to put in, uh, we're continuing to keep that uh, fund well above uh, where it needs to be to uh, pay the expected benefits. You guys on the phones clear on that? I know you've had this actuarially emailed to you, but the chief pointed out the important parts that the short version is we're actuarially sound. You, you guys all 
You guys are all clear on that? Yeah, we're, we're clear. Okay. I, I assume that, I assume that it looks actually like it's a little overfunded. Uh, do we have to still make the uh, effort to get more That, that is uh, my recommendation, even though we are overfunded in that program. Uh, if we fail to make the state match, then we, or make the uh, investment, uh, we would not get the state match. Uh, so, okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Is that it? That's it. Any questions from any uh, trustee on the actual? No. Stan, are you good? All good. Alec? I'm good. Okay. Did you have any questions on the uh, um, uh, pension, the pension actuarial? No. Okay. Doc, are you good with everything? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Great. Good. All right. Uh, second quarter allocation report? It Is was that? just what's been provided oh, okay. to us. That was sent to us um, since the most recent meeting. Okay. Um, any other business to be brought before the board tonight? Do you have anything I have no. Stan, you don't have any new business, do you? For the pension board? No. Okay, and Alec, you're good. Doc, you're good? I'm good. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> you're working hard. Uh, <laughs> uh, I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Made by Ed. Is there a second? Second. By Greg. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the pension meeting is adjourned at 1814. Wait just a couple of minutes and we'll get the regular meeting started. Okay, we'll call to order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors regular meeting, Thursday, September 10th at 1817. Director Branch, you did such a good job at the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm a professional. Yeah. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Uh, any additions or deletions to the agenda? Good. Uh, I don't know. Doc? I don't have any. Okay, great. Good. Okay, motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, review the minutes from the September 12th regular board meeting. Good with the minutes? Okay. Okay, Alec, thanks. Doc, are you good with the minutes from last month's meeting? Good. Great. Good. Yes, good. Motion to approve? So moved. Second? Is there a second? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. That'll take us to financial matters. We uh, have before you the financial report for September. Uh, and I uh, move at this point that uh, total expenses of two hundred thirty-six thousand one hundred and seventy-four dollars be approved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. That motion's. Are all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passed. Next item, Alec. Uh, I guess we're going to move into the budget. You've got the normal expenditure report in front of you, and. Uh, if anybody has any questions, we can uh, get into that. Other than that, I have nothing else. Okay. Any specifics from any directors? Okay. Chief, is this where you take over? Okay. okay. It's all yours. Okay. So uh, there is a um, draft uh, 2014 budget, uh, both in the narrative and the uh, and the spreadsheet there that uh, is provided to all the directors and available for. Uh, perusal by the public if they'd like to. 
this is not obviously the uh, budget hearing. Um, this is the first draft of the budget, which will be, we'll have the hearing later on and then finalized uh, uh, in December. The, um, the budget this year, uh, the draft budget, uh, does contain both uh, a column with uh, the uh, proposed draft uh, on the existing mill levy and a uh, column at, on the very right hand side that you can see that includes the proposed uh, mill levy increase. Uh, so uh, as you look at that, each of the last two columns there are the uh, draft, uh, draft uh, budgets for uh, 2014. Now obviously after the uh, ballot issue in November, uh, we'll be working from one or the other of those two um, uh, columns. So to start with, uh, projected uh, carryover for uh, 2014 at this time, and, and I'd like everybody to realize that these are draft numbers, and uh, we should hopefully be uh, getting um, you know, more, uh, more complete numbers as we get closer to the end of the year. But uh, we are looking at a carryover of uh, $643,000 this year, which will be the first year in four years that we've actually had an increase in the amount of uh, funds available. Um, we have an increase that we're projecting right now of $130,000 uh, this year, which uh, primarily is the um, reimbursement from fires outside the district uh, that made up that difference. That um, was $109,000, so that, uh, that, that was net. Uh, in that program, so we were, you know, that was basically why we're able to uh, look at an increased reserves going into 2014. Uh, we also have, uh, in addition, we're projecting that will be $21,000 under the uh, budget on on other uh, expenditures. And the largest part of that has been the that we had budgeted for the assistant chief's position during the year and then opted uh, not to fill that because of the um, reduced revenue that we were seeing. Had we uh, filled that position, uh, we probably would have gone uh, over our projected budget uh, for this year. Um, so looking at revenue, the first thing, uh, the assessed values have been provided by uh, the county assessors of Jefferson and, and Park County. And we saw a decrease of about 3.8% in Jefferson County and a decrease in seven per, of 7% 7 in Park County. Uh, so the combined assessed values fell 4.1% uh, going into uh, 2014. And of course those numbers will carry over to 2015 as well because their assessment is done on a bi, biennial basis, biannual basis. Uh, so what we see is that the available uh, property tax for um, 2014 is going to be $941,000. That's a decrease of $39,999 from 2013. Unfortunately, uh, we are seeing collection rates uh, less than 100%. So uh, we've uh, seen collection rates of around 96 to 97%. Uh, so we're budgeting that uh, we will collect less than the, uh, the uh, amount that is uh, due to us. And that will probably continue until, uh, you know, property, particularly until uh, vacant land sales begin to pick up because a lot of those are properties that have either uh, have stopped paying taxes for whatever reason but have not reached the point of going to a uh, county tax sale. Eventually, that missing three or four percent should be due to the district at some point in the future. But uh, we anticipate that because there is very little uh, movement in vacant land in particular, and uh, relatively slow movement in the housing market in general, that uh, we're not going to see that uh, move back up towards that hundred percent mark at this point. So. It, what we've seen is a fall of in assessments of 12% over the five-year period. Um, now, if the uh, proposed uh, 2.5 mil levy passes, 
uh, that, uh, that ballot issue uh, states, uh, shall the uh, district taxes be increased by $482,138. However, um, the 2.5 mil increase uh, that's specified in that overrides that amount. So because of the reduction in assessment, that will only generate $465,000 uh, rather than the 482 that was is on the ballot language. Um, so uh, what we're looking at again is with uh, projected collection rates on the on the new um, ballot amount that would be uh, $1,379,429. That now all of the um, you know the tax figures are are not liable to change between now and the end of the year. Uh, that's pretty pretty much uh, uh, pretty static at this point. Um, we did have delinquent tax payments in 2013 of 7,567, and uh, actually, uh, what we found is that that was largely a bulk payment uh, from uh, Park County, and uh, so that would probably represent a one uh, large uh, return. Other than that. We've only been seeing about a thousand dollars in delinquent taxes a year, uh, so um, right now we're estimating twelve hundred dollars in uh, in delinquent taxes for uh, 2014. Specific ownership taxes, which are uh, taxes paid on uh, property such as uh, vehicles, boats, RVs. Um, what we've seen with that is that we've seen a, a fall of 18 percent over the past five years in the specific ownership taxes uh, and um, we have at this point collected 69 percent of the uh, of that tax for 20, uh, 2013 that should read um, and even though we've uh, gone through 75 percent of the year so once again even though we reduce the expectations on that uh, we're going to probably come out a little bit low on the specific ownership taxes so those have been reduced going into 2014 as well. Uh, interest income is virtually negligible and it was projected to stay that way. Uh, basically you just don't get your money, you know, any money on investments these days. Uh, donations this year have been uh, exceptionally good with uh, $11,997 to date. Um, however, looking back uh, in the past, uh, for example, in 2011, we only saw $1,900 in donations for the entire year. So we don't want to budget for, uh, you know, a 10 or $12,000 donations uh, when, you know, we typically have seen closer to one to $2,000 in donations annually. So that's budgeted at $1,000 uh, for uh, 2014. Uh, inspection fees is another one that has taken a major uh, fall. Uh, in tw 2006, at the peak, uh, the, the department collected $50,000 in new construction permits. As of uh, the end of uh, September this year, we collected $1,630. Essentially, looking back over records, this has been the slowest year for building permits uh, in at least 15 years in the district. So while that used to be a, a significant uh, offset of our fire prevention programs, it's fallen basically to a negligible amount and uh, we're just not seeing construction occur within the district at this point. Uh, one area that we do see, anticipate seeing an increase, uh, we have uh, been collecting lease revenues on the cellular tower that we have here on the property. Uh, we're also, um, we've been providing uh, in the past free uh, use of the antenna up at uh, Station 3 on Conifer Mountain to uh, a couple of uh, uh, groups. One was uh, uh, WhisperTel, which we did in, in exchange for free internet service. We're no longer utilizing that service, so we're now negotiating a contract with them to pay lease on that uh, tower site. And then the, the uh, ham radio uh, group out of Denver, that's their primary tower, and they initially had gotten free use of that tower 
in exchange for having erected the tower in the first place. However, after 20 years of, of free service there, um, it's probably time for them to start uh, chipping in on that, and we're in negotiations with them as well. Um, we've got a number of uh, um, uh, vehicles that we're projecting that uh, will be sold at surplus. Uh, if uh, the mill levy does not pass, we would anticipate about $30,000 roughly in surplus sales from, uh, from the old ambulance, um, SUVs, the old pump truck, and uh, the fleet service truck of uh, $30,500 uh, that would be available for you know, capital investment into, into uh, replacement apparatus. If the mill levy does pass, uh, we're anticipating that that would also include selling the older tenders and engines to, uh, with re the replacement in, uh, apparatus coming in. And that would generate about $130,000 roughly to offset the cost of those apparatus. Uh, pension state contribution, again, is budgeted at $24,000 uh, for next year. And again, that's uh, contingent on us continuing to invest the $50,667 annually that's required for us to get that uh, state contribution. And of course, that uh, contribution, as we saw in the actuarial, is uh, something that's not necessary in order to keep that actuarially sound. However, it is necessary to get the $24,000 from the state. So I would uh, recommend that we continue doing that uh, because we don't know, you know, going into future years, whether the state will continue to contribute uh, that matching fund uh, to the district. Um, we have no other grants, uh, you know, beyond the ones that are, are booked for this year, so we're not including anything in there. Ambulance billing, um, you know, we had a high in 2007 of 801,000 in uh, gross billing for ambulance uh, <coughs> services. That fell to 683,000 in, in um, 2012. Um, that uh, was a 15% decline in gross billing, and um, we had uh, projected uh, down to uh, 625,000 at the beginning of the budget year for 2013, but uh, it's looking like we're probably going to be closer to about 650,000 at the end of the year. So we're going to use uh, 650,000 moving into 2014 for our estimate on gross um, billing. We've, uh, you know, Medicare write-offs are included in the revenue side as a as a negative revenue, while non-Medicare write-offs are considered a bad debt expense. Uh, what we've seen is that um, the uh, Medicare uh, write-offs at um, a couple of years ago were at 24 percent of our gross, and that's increased to 33 percent uh, this year. So we're using 33 percent write-off for uh, 2014. That's been a combination both of the federal government reducing the rates that they pay us and an increase in the number or the percentage of the people that we pick up that are on Medicare versus on private insurance. Okay. Um, SURF reimbursement, uh, we saw $298,113 in reimbursement for outside firefighting this year, which obviously is uh, um, by far a record. Uh, what uh, I'm proposing that we do going into next year, because uh, this, the, uh, the wildfire program outside the district uh, truly fits the, the uh, category of what's called an enterprise fund, where uh, you know, basically it's things that, you know, any expenses that we make are, uh, are directly offsetting revenue that we get from that program. So rather than continuing to keep that in the general fund budget, we would move that to basically a separate budget fund uh, so that it doesn't inflate the numbers that are in our general, uh, general fund. You know, that can go anywhere from zero, as it was four years ago, to $298,000 last year. And it's not something that we can forecast. So rather than trying to punch that into our general fund 
and come up with numbers like last year where uh, you know they were skewed by two hundred and thirty thousand dollars we keep that as a separate uh, fund and budget both the expenses and the income uh, from that uh, on their own that way when someone looks at our general fund budget it's going to reflect what we do you know here versus the you know the basically uh, if you if you like the other part of it as an enterprise fund is sort of like running a, a a business to make money for the district. Okay. Um, so basically what we come down to in that is our net revenue for 2014 is uh, projected to be $1,497,451 if the mill levy does not pass and $1,963,079 if it does pass. Uh, if you look at um, a comparison of the projected, uh, you know, budget for, um, you know, compared to 2010, we're looking at a 23% decline if the uh, mill levy does not pass, and only an increase of 1% over the 2010 budget if it does. So even though, uh, you know, we're looking at a fairly significant mill levy increase, it would only put us back to where we were in 2010. It would not put us above that level. If it fails, it uh, the uh, that 23 percent decline essentially puts the district back to a funding level that we saw approximately you know 16 years ago. So it's uh, distinctly putting us uh, backwards in terms of the uh, ability of the district to uh, continue to uh, to operate, uh, given that obviously in 16 years. Uh, expenses and, and uh, call volumes and everything have gone up dramatically. Moving on to the expenditures uh, in uh, uncollectible debt, uh, we're projecting it's been uh, between 19 and 22 percent of our budget over the last several years, so we're estimating that at 22 percent of our gross billing for this year. If you combine the uh, um, the Medicare write-offs and the bad debt write-offs, uh, we're actually only collecting about 47% of the ambulance billing that we send out. So that's um, unfortunately uh, has gotten to be a, a low, you know, a smaller number over time. So moving on to governance, um, the uh, governance budget is fairly similar to uh, what we have for for this year with the exception that we don't have to budget for the mill levy election instead we do have to budget for uh, uh, directors uh, we've got two director uh, seats uh, uh, three director seats up for election and uh, with that uh, in speaking with uh, the election officials uh, they recommended that uh, we budget about 150 percent of the cost for uh, the last director's election uh, because there are, are more positions up, up for election and they anticipate again that cost of going up. So that $1,210 is based on doing a uh, you know a single polling place ballot as was done the last time. The district of course will have the option of doing that or a mail ballot. However, a mail ballot would uh, cost you know, probably twenty to thirty thousand dollars so that would be a significant additional cost if the district uh, opted to go with a mail ballot uh, moving into administration uh, there is not much difference in the administration budget whether uh, the no levy passes or not and uh, it's very it's projected to stay relatively flat uh, from the current year's budget um, Basically, as we go down there, uh, one of the things that we'll see throughout this is we have uh, an increased uh, the uh, expected amount for personnel benefits. Uh, I did not have uh, renewal numbers available at the time, so uh, we plugged in 10% uh, increase in personnel benefits. Uh, I believe uh, that we're looking actually at about a 6% increase uh, because we just got preliminary uh, estimates today from the from the um, uh, benefit uh, providers 
so it'll be a slightly lower than what we're showing there, but uh, again, it, you know, as it always does, uh, personnel benefits are projected to increase. Uh, accounting services, we did, uh, we are looking at a higher uh, budget amount in 2013 than uh, we had budgeted, uh, both to both because of uh, revising the budget to uh, make it uh, a lot more understandable and uh, more transparent, and then also. Uh, you know, placing the payroll uh, processing costs into that line item. Um, so the only real difference between having the mill levy and not having the mill levy in the administration budget is allocating uh, $3,000 uh, to conduct hiring for the vacant position, uh, which we would not be proposing to do if that position or if the uh, uh, mill levy doesn't pass at this time. Okay. Moving into emergency services, uh, wages uh, and um, are at this time being proposed to be uh, still kept flat. Um, and uh, we do have uh, an increase uh, from several years ago in the uh, overtime and the primary uh, reason for that is that uh, we have been utilizing the full-time staff to, to backfill instead of using uh, part-time uh, paramedics from, uh, you know, down the hill. And uh, there have been two reasons for that. One has been that uh, we have a, a much smaller pool of part-time personnel and uh, generally they have not been um, as available as some of the part-time personnel that we utilized in the past. And then secondly, uh, you know, by utilizing our, our current personnel, you know, we're getting someone who already knows where they're going when they drive out to the station. They already know the equipment. So um, if you look at combining both the backfill and the, uh, and the um, part-time personnel, we've actually decreased uh, by about $30,000 over the last three years in that, in that line item. Uh, workman's compensation, uh, you know, we, we saw a continued uh, climb, and uh, basically the problem with that is that we have to deal with a seven-year history of claims. So we're still dealing with uh, a you know, high number of, of claims and uh, significant uh, dollar claims that occurred in the past with some of our personnel and uh, it's going to take several years uh, basically for that to, to slowly return back down to a, uh, a more reasonable number. Okay, uh, one area that I would propose that we do uh, include if the uh, mill levy it passes is uh, re reinstating the medical examination program. Uh, that is uh, something that's been a very uh, uh, strong recommendation from our uh, insurance carrier that uh, we uh, provide medical examinations to personnel. Uh, they see uh, you know, us not having medical evaluations of our personnel before they're put on uh, as firefighters as a significant risk to the district, uh, you know, primarily in that we could be taking someone on who has a medical condition and then, you know, uh, goes on to have a heart attack or some other problem while on uh, on the um, uh, job, even as a volunteer or creative group uh, staff. That um, would be somewhat expensive for us to do. I think we I budgeted twenty thousand uh, in that line item to uh, to provide that. Uh, however, again, that's something that's strongly recommended. Um, Let's see, moving down. Another big change this year, uh, you know, we've been in discussions with Evergreen Fire Rescue over moving uh, dispatch over to there from the Jefferson County Sheriff, along with the other uh, 10 fire departments that are currently dispatched out of Jeffco. Uh, of those, we're by far the largest uh, district. Most of those districts uh, just have, you know, a few hundred uh, calls a year. Uh, so uh, basically uh, what happens is, you know, as a department reaches a certain size in the past, they have been, um, you know, once they reach a certain size, 
Jefferson County has not provided the dispatching service to them in the past. Uh, with uh, the majority of those departments now already committed to moving over uh, to um, Evergreen, uh, basically what we're looking at is that uh, Jefferson County Sheriff is going to be dropping uh, the fire dispatching entirely. And um, you know that has been something that we have had as a free service, but is not you know not an obligation of the county to provide for us. Uh, they have been basically just historically doing it for the small uh, departments that have funding issues. Um, so, but uh, at this point, um, both because of the decision by uh, the majority of the departments already to move, and because that was the recommendation of the. A consultant study uh, you know what we're looking at is a consolidation of the fire dispatching into two dispatch centers for the county and uh, we're going to be required at that point to pay uh, our portion of the dispatching so what we're looking at there is a new cost of thirty four thousand uh, dollars per year now one benefit to that uh, that thirty four thousand dollars is actually going to be uh, money well spent in that with the change to Evergreen Fire, we can once again get uh, the lower classification of insurance for all the people on the, in the uh, Shadow Mountain area, down in the South Elk Creek area, any of the other areas, um, Ullman Park, Pleasant Park area, uh, that uh, have lost that Class 5 because of uh, in a, you know, the refusal of Jeffco Sheriff to provide automatic aid dispatching. So once we move over, that is something Evergreen Fire is going to be able to do to us. So that $34,000 is going to translate to a lot more money saved by district residents. Unfortunately, it's not money that's going to come into uh, the district budget. So in 2011, uh, emergency operations costs were $795,000. Uh, we're projecting it to fall to $562,997 if the mill levy does not pass and uh, $625,000 if the mill levy does pass. Or, excuse me, um, $625,000 if it does not pass and $643,000 if it passes. Okay. Moving into fire operations, uh, one of the biggest costs there is uh, the personal protective gear for uh, the firefighters. Uh, 2013, we accelerated uh, purchasing uh, PPE uh, to basically uh, try to get the, the 15 new volunteers outfitted. Um, we basically depleted any of the, the PPE that we forgot. Um, if, uh, if the mill levy does not pass, um, the, that budget figure has dropped back to basically the level, the $12,000 that we had been putting in, which just allows us to continue to replace gear uh, as needed. If the mill levy passes, uh, I'm proposing increasing that by $70,000 to allow us to recruit additional volunteers onto the district. Um, so what we're looking at there is, without the levy, the budget for Structural fire operations is 18400 If the Mel levy passes, that would increase to $76,400, primarily because of the uh, PPE. Um, wildland firefighting, there would be no change in the, uh, in the budget if the uh, Mel levy does not pass, with the exception that, you know, throughout, in the 2013 budget, there are a number of areas where I had planned to allocate our fuel costs uh, to where they're being used rather than having them as a, as a single line item. However, we just weren't able to figure out how to do that effectively without spending a lot of time you know, tracking where we're, where we're fueling vehicles and, um, and, uh, you know, versus just having the, the tracking overall of what we're doing with it. So uh, we weren't able to really do that. So the, uh, the only other change if the uh, mill levy passes would be an additional $5,000 in personal protective equipment for uh, wildland firefighting for the proposed additional volunteers. Okay, EMS, um, the, uh, 
everything is uh, the same except uh, immunizations. Uh, this year we opted uh, not to do immunizations. Basically, we are. Uh, can now move to a every other year program for tuberculosis testing. Uh, and uh, so by doing that, that's saving us, uh, um, you know, the immunizations on the off years. So added back in, uh, that brings us to, um, you know, uh, $32,100 for 2014. In prevention, um, the, uh, um, the proposal there is that uh, we would replace uh, basically 50% of the position that we cut at the beginning of this year if the mill levy passes. So, uh, and it would be 50% allocation to prevention and 50% allocation to training. So we would hire one person and they would be responsible for basically the two jobs that were previously done. Um, so, the, um, basically, the, the budget would decrease. If we do not have the mill levy, we're going to uh, decrease the budget from the current 32000 to 16000 uh, And um, some of that is a decrease in the, uh, the allocated wages that we had uh, basically at the beginning of, of this year for uh, the... Um, the prevention position before uh, it was cut at the end of January, uh, or it would go to 43,000 with uh, the additional position. And that is still below the $61,835 that we had uh, spent in 2012. Okay, once again in training, that would be the other 50% of the proposed position. Uh, the, um, the other thing that we're proposing in the the budget, if the mill levy passes, would be an additional $10,000 in EMS training. Uh, right now, uh, and for several years now, if uh, any of our volunteers want to uh, become EMTs, uh, they have to do it out of their own pocket. And the problem that we've got with that is that we've got uh, a fair number of our volunteers, a significant portion of them, that do not opt to become EMTs because of uh, the cost. Um, you know, because we're asking them to pay for it. So uh, we very often during the daytime in particular, we can get uh, people here to respond to calls, but they're not qualified to treat the patient and transport them to the hospital. Uh, and that's caused us a, a lot of times to have to call on neighboring districts, even though we have personnel, because they don't have the qualifications to make the transport to the hospital themselves. So. By funding that for our volunteers, we should be able to increase the number of our volunteers who are uh, trained as EMTs and, uh, and uh, able to respond on the ambulance. So uh, if, uh, if the mill levy passes, we would still be looking at a decrease from $81,540 to $70,440. If the mill levy doesn't pass, the training budget would drop to $18,250. Moving on to maintenance, um, we've, uh, we continue to exceed uh, our overtime costs and maintenance. Uh, so we, those, that uh, has been bumped up going into next year um, at this point. Uh, the other thing that uh, we've been seeing is that our costs for our repairs of fire apparatus have been increasing over the past few years, primarily due to the aging of the equipment. So if the mill levy doesn't pass, uh, those figures are increased uh, to 18,000 uh, for uh, repair parts and 10,000 for outside repairs, which is, for example, sending uh, out for transmission work or any other work that's not done here on site. If the mill levy passes, uh, you know, we would anticipate having additional vehicles replacing the older ones with ones that are under warranty and uh, so we could significantly cut the maintenance costs uh, in that respect. So we're looking at um, a savings of about, uh, about um, $12,000 between uh, those two line items uh, by having newer apparatus. 
Uh, another area that we've uh, been uh, that we need to look at, uh, we have uh, deferred maintenance on uh, the water cisterns, particularly our own. Um, that uh, you know we need to need to uh, put some additional funding into. So we put some money into that line item, and uh, so what we're seeing is if the mill levy uh, does not pass, we expect our maintenance cost or cost to climb uh, from 155,000 to 159,000 as currently budgeted. Uh, with uh, mill levy passage, uh, that budget would actually start to drop. Um, under facilities, uh, the uh, under the you know the budget without the mill levy passing, uh, we're looking at just a, a slight increase because what we've been seeing is that we've slightly under budgeted uh, utilities over the past year, or and um, we're going to probably exceed that. And then uh, if the mill levy passes, uh, one other uh, project that has been um, Put off for several years. We've got a, we've actually got a generator for Station Four, but we haven't had the funds to actually install it. So, when we have power outages right now, uh, Station Four does not have backup power, uh, and um, you know what we need is about five thousand dollars to install that uh, generator. Uh, moving under capital, um, the uh, if the mill and primarily what we're looking at here is mill levy passage uh, because basically without the mill levy passage you know we're looking at hundred and five thousand dollar additional cut from this year and uh, we're already at basically no capital investment currently so uh, cutting an additional hundred and five thousand into next year's budget there's just not going to be any way that we're going to come up with funds to uh, replace any apparatus if the mill levy does pass, uh, the district would be obligated uh, under the language of the ballot to purchase one fire engine and two tenders. What I am proposing though is that instead of just replacing the one engine, that we go ahead and replace uh, the, basically purchase the three uh, interface engines that I had recommended earlier in the year as part of the long range plan uh, right up front. And there's a couple reasons for doing that. Uh, uh, one is that uh, by purchasing them, you know, if we were able to order them before the end of this year, we would be able to get the, you know, the price increase that is going to occur on January 1st. Every year that we put those off, uh, the prices increase typically anywhere from seven to ten percent annually. So, uh, you know, you put a, year, uh, a fire engine off, purchase off for a year. If you're paying, you know, 10% uh, more for the, the apparatus, you've basically given up having that, that apparatus uh, there for the year and, uh, you know, at the same cost. So, in other words, if we finance these over 10 years, that first year's payment is equal to the amount that we would pay the following year additional. So, the earlier that we buy them, the, uh, the less expensive they are. Secondly, the, um, by purchasing more than one at a time, we can get significant discounts. Uh, you know, very often that can amount to as much as 10% discount on the price of those apparatus by pur purchasing multiple units at one time. Uh, the, um, the other thing is that it allows us to get uh, basically, once again, those lower maintenance costs by, you know, cycling, uh, you know, apparatus that would be due for replacement in 2017 or 2016 out now, uh, you know, basically we'd be able to reduce our maintenance costs uh, fairly significantly. All of the maintenance for the first uh, several years on those new apparatus would be covered under warranty with the exception of, you know, basic stuff like oil changes. Um, the uh, once again, you know, doing this, what we would look at would be financing the, uh, the three interface engines, the two tenders, and then also picking up two pickup trucks to replace the other four vehicles that we're pro proposing selling. So um, we would be reducing the overall fleet by doing this. We would be, sell uh, 
the three older vehicles, uh, the the one uh, one uh, Type Three engine up at or Type Two engine up at Conifer Mountain, the two old tenders. But then we'd also be replacing the engine at uh, at uh, Station Four and uh, moving to replace. Uh, a couple of the Type 6 uh, brush engines, which we could sell for, um, you know, to help finance the program as well. So basically what we'd be looking at is an estimated cost of $1.96 million uh, for the uh, seven vehicles that we're, um, that we're proposing. The financing uh, for that would be, uh, the quote I got was $233,000 to uh, finance that, that apparatus. And what I'm proposing is that that would come out of that 448,000 projected uh, mill because the primary um, you know, reason that we're looking at this mill levy is uh, to you know, finance the, the ongoing maintenance uh, replacement of capital that, we've, uh, that we're projecting. Instead of uh, you know, doing the one million dollars that we'd originally looked at for the three vehicles, uh, you know, again we'd have some savings in, in costs. Uh, in, instead, you know, we the original proposal had been that we would finance that one million and put the other money aside for a couple of years, and then purchase the other apparatus. I think that it is to our benefit to go ahead and front load the apparatus replacement. Uh, and finance it over the entire term of the mill uh, uh, mill levy increase. Okay. Um, the only other apparatus that we would look at if we did that replacing in the next uh, three years would be that we are uh, going to be due for replacement of one uh, of our ambulances. And uh, I, that could still be done under our existing uh, funding. Um, so that, uh, and that, and again, we would not be looking at needing to replace any other apparatus for several years. So in the, in the end, uh, if you look at uh, the last section here, it shows uh, basically a breakdown of all of the funding uh, in the mill levy and what would be uh, done with it under this proposal. So of the 448,000, 233,000 would go directly to the capital fund uh, financing that we're proposing. Uh, approximately 82,000 would go to replacing that staff position and that would not be a position funded at 82,000. That 82,000 would cover the position, benefits, and all the other expenses that go into having uh, having that position filled. 75,000 for PPE so that we can increase our uh, volunteer staffing. 20,000 into the medical program and that leaves $27,705 out of that uh, which is a relatively small portion that would be uh, basically rolled into reserves and to start help building the reserves of the district up. While that still uh, is not a, a very large amount invested into the reserves. Uh, what we would anticipate is that in a couple of years, as we pay off some of our older leases, we'd be able to, uh, you know, in about three years, we'll have a lease uh, that uh, pays off and we'll reduce that to, by about 40000 a year, and then another one three years later. Uh, so we would be able to start building our reserves back up over time with that. So, um, again, you know, the bottom line of this, if uh, we look at the, uh, uh, you know, comparing just uh, uh, 2012 or 2013 to 2014, uh, we would be seeing uh, expenditures dropping from uh, basically 1.6 million to 1.5 million uh, without the, the mill levy passage. Um, and right now, as that currently is drafted, we would be drawing $28,270 out of reserves next year uh, unless we make additional cuts. Um, if the mill levy passes, uh, again, that would be, uh, we would be investing uh, $33,400 into uh, reserves. Okay. <laughs> yeah.
Okay. So, uh, are there any questions on that? Greg, you hear me? Oh, uh, Chief. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm assuming the PPE is $75,000. Is a one-time deal? That is correct. That would be a one-year increase to $75,000, basically in anticipation of doing a significant uh, recruitment of new volunteers. Then after that, we would drop back to roughly the amount that we need to have on hand uh, to replace gear annually, so roughly the $12,000 a year. Okay, so, so, so the, 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 net front, the first year expense uh, is going to drop, and so it'll be an additional theoretically $60,000 that might be available for, uh, uh, to put into capital. That is correct. Yeah, we would we would anticipate that sixty thousand a year, the second year and on, would be available for capital uh, investment. Thank you, Doc. Do you have anything? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Um, Stan, how about you? Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, since you're not done talking, why don't you go ahead and give your, uh, your fire chief. Oh, that's the longest I've talked in a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, chief's report for October 2013. Uh, primarily uh, what we were looking at in terms of activity for the month, uh, we had a pretty dramatic uh, bump up in calls. Uh, we went up to 105 calls in September. Um, so. Uh, normally, we would anticipate after the summer that uh, calls uh, should start to drop off a bit, but uh, we didn't see that. So we are now uh, looking at the current uh, number of calls, the current rate that we're going to be finishing up the year with about uh, 1,150 uh, calls, so an increase of about uh, 30 to 40 calls over last year, and uh, moving that up to uh, basically our second busiest year. Uh, in history. Um, the majority of the calls in the month were uh, EMS calls. We had 49 um, uh, basic EMS calls, 15 additional motor vehicle accidents, and uh, one, one uh, rope rescue call. Um, the, uh, in addition, we had uh, three service calls and uh, 32 good intent calls. And we also uh, provided um, uh, mutual aid to a number of departments around uh, uh, the county and, and outside the county for the, the uh, floods. Um, we provided assistance to Coal Creek Canyon, Arvada, Golden Gate Canyon, Evergreen, and Milliken. Uh, uh, so we had quite a few folks out uh, helping out with that. Um, those folks were uh, performed um, damage assessment, uh, did sandbagging, uh, rescued uh, animals, rescued uh, residents. Uh, they um, were actually uh, up doing reconnaissance, finding ways to get into some of the trapped residents up in uh, the upper Coal Creek Canyon area. And um, uh, we also had uh, one of our engines uh, backfill the station uh, and provided basically their ba their basic service running uh, EMS calls and, and fire calls for them uh, up in uh, Weld, uh, Weld County. Uh, and again, all of that was reimbursed uh, primarily by FEMA, so that uh, that's not going to be at any cost to the, uh, to the district taxpayers. We did have uh, no uh, fire loss during the entire month. Uh, the one car fire that we had was actually a mutual aid uh, response to Inner Canyon. I just happened to be driving down the road and saw a car on fire. So had to stop. Um, okay, um, average response time during the month was eight minutes and 51 seconds. That's really been pretty much where we've seen our response time sitting at for a number of uh, years, or a number of uh, months. Uh, we had 36 transports during the month, which was an increase over, uh, over August as well. Staffing, uh, we had uh, 910 hours of uh, volunteer staffing at the station. 
Um, and then in training, we had uh, we uh, our regular drills focused on uh, rope rescue, which again we did uh, end up using when uh, we had our first uh, our first fall victim in uh, Staunton State Park since it opened. We've been uh, I believe we've been in the Staunton State Park uh, seven times now since the since the park opened. Um, so we anticipate that dropping off during the winter months. But as the park expands, we'll probably see additional uh, calls into Staunton in the, in the future. But, uh, you know, it's been a, a slight increase in our call volume with the park opening, but um, definitely has been an impact primarily because when we have something like a rope rescue call that uh, requires a, a large number of personnel uh, and they tend to be fairly lengthy. Uh, so they, that is going to be a continued impact. Um, we've had uh, a number of uh, requests for talks, uh, mostly on the proposed mill levy. So uh, we've uh, we had 11 events that we uh, had uh, personnel speaking at, and then uh, our the uh, September issue of the Bugle newsletter is uh, actually going to be going out in October. Um, you know, with the floods and everything in September, uh, things got uh, got behind, so that. Uh, that's coming out a couple weeks late and is, has been printed and should be uh, delivered very shortly. Um, mitigation assessments continue to, to climb. Uh, we had 32 uh, mitigation assessments during September. If you recall, I think uh, last year we were averaging about two or three a month. Uh, now we're averaging uh, more than one a day and that's increasing uh, still. Um, we've uh, been dealing with a lot more. A lot of these are being prompted by insurance companies uh, either requiring them or uh, many, in many cases uh, we're getting called by people who are losing their insurance. They want uh, mitigation advice and they also very often want advice on where they can find uh, insurance um, because of the number of people that are, are losing insurance currently. Uh, we did start our Firefighter 2 program that's grant funded at the end of uh, the month and that is ongoing now and uh, that's going to be covering 90% of the cost and that's a 10% match on our part. Um, wildfires, uh, we're, we're finally into the slow season. Uh, we had um, one local mutual aid fire uh, that we actually, I believe, were, uh, were uh, canceled on and then one uh, that we provided assistance out of state. And again, uh, you know, now that we're pretty much at the end of the of the out of uh, out of district response program, we've got uh, our numbers on that. And uh, right now, uh, we've had uh, $298,113 in uh, gross um, reimbursement. Of that, $189,106 uh, actually went to to costs such as fuel and uh, personnel costs. And uh, that left, uh, again, $109,007 this year that uh, basically rolled over into building up our reserves for capital replacement as we move ahead. So that uh, program has obviously been doing, uh, doing us uh, quite well in terms of uh, providing us uh, additional funds. And that's it for the uh, Chief's report for the month. Okay. Any questions for the Chief? Seeing none. Any old business from the board? I have none. Okay. Hearing and seeing none. Any new business tonight? Greg, you have any? Good. Doc? No. Alec? There is this from the no. business. So, uh, you know, oh. set the budget hearing. Okay, there is one new business item. We need to set a budget hearing at the next regular board meeting, November 14th. Is there a motion for that? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? second? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, motion passes. It's to set a budget hearing at the next regular board meeting November 14th. Okay. Thanks. Okay, any other new business? Seeing none, any citizens issues tonight? Seeing none, how about a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Okay. Right. 
at 1916. We're adjourned.